Good morning, Vim boy. How you doing today? Test saying one, two, three. Test, test, test. Mic, 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 check, check, check. Cool. Mm, morning booty. Let's see what you like. <laughs> Thank you for the redeems. I'm still setting up a little bit. So let me go grab myself a glass of water and we'll be good to go in just a second. Mm. How are you doing this morning? You were just going, getting the Sag, but you're happy now because you got the stream. I'm glad that you're happy. <laughs> I feel kind of dummy because yesterday I found out the reason. Now, no one mentioned that the uh, sound wasn't being recorded from my computer up until you did. And then I found out that I didn't record the uh, voiceovers of anyone else in chat. So even though I was doing a stream with other VTubers, no one else's voices got recorded on stream. I felt really bad about that.
I am back. We need a starting soon, hard stuff. I would love something like that, not gonna lie. I know a couple of music producers here in the YouTube space, but as with a lot of things, I don't really have much money in the budget for the VTubing budget to commission something like that. Maybe in the future I will. Right now that I'm back, I should probably head and um announce everyone that I'm around. You know, just a thing that I probably should do. After waiting a couple of months, I finally got the custom song you were waiting for. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So, is that like recent, or is that the song that you can hear in your intro right now? Ordered it months ago? Oh, I see. It just arrived? Very nice. Very, very nice. Nothing like what I lost near five hundred. Uh, oh wait. Ah, uh, ooh, that hurts. I'm not gonna lie. I'm really sorry that that or that that was the case. I mean, I kind of assumed that it was gonna be like it would be like other commissions where they like work on it and then they give you a sample and they're like, "Are you okay with this?" And then you're like, "Yeah, I'm okay with it," or "No, can you make this and this and this change?" You know, to avoid this exact situation from occurring. I'm sad it didn't happen in your case, and then that didn't happen in this case.
Okay, life goes on. Yeah, I guess, but it still sucks. I guess that's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes things just don't work out the way you want them. A lot of money on Not be what you I'm kind of iffy sometimes on commissions because that is the case where something might not be exactly how I envision, but at the same time, it's like, what can you do? It's not like the artist is necessarily in your brain, you know? <laughs> Let's see now. Do... Ah! That's still going on. Still doing a demon po I'm still doing the demon thing. One second. Beep boop. Beep boop boop boop. Boop beep boop. My check, my check. I check my gun, my check. You know what? When dual PC streaming works, it works great. <laughs> when it doesn't work, it makes you want to tear your hair out. T posing for dominance. Feels like T posing is my default form. I just turn into this form that people are, so that the mortals are not uh, afraid. Not be afraid. AMD event in two days' time? What do you mean by this? Multi memes, type luminas. Sex, love, and goop. Go to one forty. This is where we left off, chat. Then we start pre-ordering two new computers, one for the model and one for streaming. New model has so many polys and has such high resolution; it will have to have its own dedicated four D. 90ti <laughs> now we're cooking with monies when they say youtubing is a pay to win career this is what they really mean chat last but not least let me go ahead and go ahead and uh announce on twitter that i'm actually online A doobie. A doobie doobie. Doobie 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 doobie. Ah, oh, fuck me. Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, shit. God damn it. Oh. That could have been bad. This always happens getting stuck underneath there and. Hope my. Really hope my, um, DAC didn't get damaged in that stupid. in that bout of stupidity, stupidity just now. Let's uh let's test it out. Preferably with some music that will not get me copyright strucken. Copy copy written copy written. Um, I don't know any <laughs> mm, I do. Well, it doesn't matter if this isn't if this is if this gets demonetized anyway. It's not like I'm making money off YouTube.
Good morning, King Kuma. How are you doing this morning? Looks like everything is all set. I just need to update one last thing, and that is to change the tags on... Change my tags here in the stream information, and we will be good to go. Also, I need to announce on... Twitter that I'm actually online again. Four hours of sleep and I can't go back to bed. Oh rip. What a big mood. What a very big mood, unfortunately. I'm well familiar with three, six, nine. Last but not least. All right. Now then, I'm sorry for how long that setup took. Unfortunately, with the advent of dual PC streaming, I feel like I've been having to do a lot more setup lately, which is unfortunate. But this is kind of the—it feels like this is the cost of the incre increased or semi-increased production values, the increased setup, and the increased technical issues I have to deal with. Even right now, I'm kind of on edge about uh, whether or not audio is going to suffer this time. I hope that's not the case. Let me just test something really quick. Alright, cool. The redeem sounds actually work now. Which seems like a very basic thing, but... Oh, uh, every time you think something is basic in this space, it just punches you in the face when you find out later to stream that no, everything's not all right. <laughs> That's enough of negativity. We don't need any negativity in this world. There's enough in the world that I want to try and create a space where such things are not necessary. And I don't just mean part of my brand, I just mean... Oh, who goes there? Vomi Mama, thank you so much for the follow. How are you doing this morning? Welcome to the LOL's Time Show with your host, actual shit poster AI Laura Hicks, currently dressed in a nice comfy kimono outfit. Are you up for some nice VTuber writing today? We're actually watching through the rest of a podcast I held with another VTuber named Christian VT. Um, I agreed to do some VTuber lore for him, although I'm a little bit late in that regard, which is why we're trying to do it on Saturdays. I figured it'd be kind of fun to uh, do a little bit on stream since I've been meaning to go back to doing hosting some writing workshops for my followers anyway. Um, I was not aware of how popular these have become, and I'm glad that people like coming to my uh, little seminars here, and I hope I'm not boring all of y'all a little too much. I hope not, I'm not boring all of y'all too much. <laughs> now then. Hey Lawler, I come from Mushu. I'm so down to learn this and hang out with you. Oh, cool, cool. I love ARP. Thank you, 
for uh, coming over from Mushu server. He has a great community of people. I'm always happy to see new people are sliding on over from his community. <laughs> I'm just not a morning bear. Like, what time are you in? I'm in Central Standard, believe it or not. It is 8 in the morning here in Kuma. Um, I typically host this stream this early specifically so that the Europeans and Southeast Asians and Australians can visit and not be like four in the fucking morning. <laughs> um, even though I'm not a morning person myself either, so as you might expect, I also end up having trouble waking up and setting up for my own stream. Especially, si especially since I stream like 9 to 12 the previous evening on Fridays. I got a lot more sleep last night because, well, we had the VTuber tourney and I didn't stay up as late. I freaking just passed out <laughs> after the fighting games. <laughs> uh, but I'll just have to grin and bear it. I'm thinking maybe I should move my uh, weekend streams to Sunday, but people have shit to do. And part of the reason I like to do it early morning on Saturdays because people have things to do on Saturdays too, you know? Yeah, that's fair, yo. EST for me lately, my sleep is all wild as heck. Oh my gosh. So it's like 7 in the morning for you, isn't it? Uh, I'm sorry to hear that your sleeping habits have also gone to shit, but thank you for deciding to stop by anyway. When me mommy says, love my I feel that, yeah. It's like being in college again. VTubers just do not sleep. We, we both need to sleep. We are demons, angels, artificial intelligences. Uh, sentient toasters, we don't need sleep. What is this sleep? Sleep is a human concept, and how many of us are can be truly say to be truly human? It isn't C at 7 a.m. EST right now, lol. I'm in EST. It is. Oh, shoot. I got it backwards. The West Coast is, a, is early in the morning, the East Coast is ahead. My bad. <laughs> it's, a, it's 9 for you. Which means California is what is uh six in the morning right now. Um, I usually don't usually give new people a chance. Nothing against them. I just have a very abrasive attitude. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh. Okay. Uh. What was that? I lost my train of thought now. Um, I've completely lost my train of thought. What's this thing? Oh yeah, I was going on about time zones or fuck. Um, but yeah, that's the main reason why these streams are so early on my end on Saturdays. It's because I have a lot of uh, followers on the other side of the world who have a difficult time seeing my streams on the weekdays because on the weekdays it's usually super early morning for them. Um, especially with people with uh, followers in Philippines. Followers in Philippines, I usually either catch them really early in the morning on my time zone when I'm just coming, coming into work, um, or they catch me really early their morning <laughs> when they have just woken up for work or school or what have you. Um, so that's the reason. Speaking of which, I actually do have another stream tonight. I will not be streaming. I'll actually, I do a monthly collab with Hutunder44. And Kamoyu, we like to MST3K, which is Mystery Science Theater 3000, uh, bad films, copyright free films on YouTube. I'll be posting a link to that later. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Where we left off, the last time we were here, we were basically going through the podcast I held with Christian VT regarding his lore. Um, we were developing his character arc. He started off as a fairly, um, a fairly common trope. We got a elf here, a bit dark backstory who was forced to leave his home, who was from a society of warriors. We were able to convert this to something a little bit more unique. Um, for example, one of the first things we started off with was the fact that. He wanted to be, his character wanted to be a chef, and unlike a lot of characters that fall under this trope, um, we decide together that his parents were not exactly reticent about him being a chef, as long as he, as he, as long as he also studied to be a warrior as well. 
which was kind of a fairly common trope here in the real world as well. Um, speaking from experience as a in the meat space world, um, my handler, person behind the avatar, is um, actually of Asian descent, and they've also had similar experience where their parents wanted them to go into a practical field as opposed to a artsy field. So they had to do both, um, even though they kind of sucked at the practical field portion. Uh, so we decide that the elf their elf backstory took after their mother, who was a chef, and but they also learned to be a fighter as like their father. Um, and then we moved on to deciding what was the impetus for having to leave their village. Uh, and he still wanted to go with the whole some sort of tragedy happened, but then we decided more along the that instead of a tragedy happening onto themselves, um, they came from more of a monster hunter inspired backstory as opposed to the general uh, need to regain my honor type thing that you usually see in a lot of fantasy stories. So instead, he's actually going on a quest to reacquire an item that was stolen by an outsider. Now, how does he go about doing this? We're about to find that out. <laughs> so, although else brings up other questions like, why do they steal from this village to begin with? And also, what is the item that was stolen? You can go in many different directions with this, really. This is also part of the reason why, um, in real criminal cases, they try to the detectives try to figure out what the motive was. Um, how is the suspect related to the victim and whatnot? I just got a really dumb idea. No, uh, there's very few dumb ideas. What's your idea? Um, the thing that was stolen. For, uh, of the of the village mm -hmm. was a ceremonial knife. A ceremonial knife, huh? Okay. A, a, a ceremonial knife. But this knife is hot shape. It belongs in the museum. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like a like a cooking knife. It's not a cooking knife, but it looks like one. It looks like a chef's knife, huh? Uh huh. Well, hear me out. Mm -hmm. This this uh, they are like ch chasing the the person that stole it, and they see that it's in, it's impossible to get to him or get the well get the item back. Impossible? Why is it impossible? Because it's well, it's, it's possible for me to 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 get it out because it's a prize. It's a prize. Yeah, it, it's a prize for a for a, a, a really specific event. Oh, a specific type of event. It's a prize for a competition of some kind. Yeah. It, it, it was stolen by the. Now, uh, for those of you who were not at the previous stream last week, uh, prior to all this, we were discussing heavily the concept of video games and also manga that kind of revolve around similar concepts of being a monster hunter, but also being a chef, such as, uh, what was it? Battle Chef Brigade? Battle, Battle Star Brigaders? <laughs> Kidding. Also, why did Lo-Fi stop? Actually, let's not search it, but we just because I have safe search turned off still. We don't trick. Go. Voila! Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Battle Elf Brigade. <laughs> Battle VTuber Brigade. Obviously. And to readjust the organize 
nature of, the, of that event to justify how much the Like, wait a minute. Are you not allowed to play two YouTube videos at once now? And this change. It's so fucking weird. <laughs> well, I guess there's nothing to really do about that chat. We'll just have to continue listening to Christian my own's uh, very beautiful voices. Well, the people are that, that are going in. I see. And and this this uh, uh, event, this uh, tournament, is a type of Master Chef Iron Chef. That's cool. So it. The ceremony knife is the prize of a cooking competition. It's been stolen, and Christian must go on a quest to reclaim the stolen kitchen knife, or ceremonial yeah. knife, kitchen knife, whichever. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably it probably makes more sense if it was just a kitchen knife, since it's part of a cooking competition. Yeah, but it, it, everybody looks at it like a, a prize, like oh yeah, it's really cool. But me being of that uh, of where it's stolen it's a ceremonial knife and that's why like it's, it's uh, like really really specific how to say it like the motivation to to go out all right to get to get, to get better as uh, at cooking to manage to fight them and was this stolen before during or after the tournament the cooking tournament uh, this, this was stolen for the tournament to happen. Oh, so it was stolen from the village, and it's been made a prize in a cooking tournament yes. outside the village. Yeah, yeah. That's actually really cool. See, this is why I said you no. Know, there are very few dumb ideas. This is that's actually a very good. Uh, that's actually a very clever idea. Um, now it kind of interweaves a lot of things um, into the story, really. It also, I it's also in a very clever roundabout way. Uh, suddenly gives a lot more importance to the fact that your character is a chef because. Yeah, like who would tell them the, the, the ability of, of cooking that I refined with my mother because I like it it was going to be used in one of the missions that make me so good with the knife yeah like I can imagine the village elder or something being like yo so our fable our important fabled ceremonial thing majig has been stolen by stolen the only problem is we cannot go get it back without risking war with such and such nation. However, they're holding a cooking competition. <laughs> yes. And so we will send you as our representative. <laughs> exactly. See, does this sound dumb at all? No. Dude, this is this is like this is the stuff of manga going on right here. <laughs> this is so shown this is so shown in jumpish. <laughs> I love it. Big comedy. I Honestly Toriko has a lot of stuff like this where they give you food or they give you uh, cooking utensils as a reward for beating this competition or defeating this challenge or something. But I also like this uh, kind of narrate this kind of narrative where the skill previously thought the skill or probably more importantly the part of the identity that was once scorned in someone is found to not only be useful. But also to be a necessity for this organization or for that person to succeed in their own personal growth. Thereby validating um, the part of their identity that was previously suppressed or was denied or was uh, outcast by their peer. 
And this is a very important story that I feel like, even though it's very common and you see it, or I feel like it's, it is supposed to be very common, it's something that I think is very important to be constantly retold. Sometimes I think that stories go the wrong way about this and they will um, depict this as depict this as what the person what the main character should be doing at the expense of everything else as opposed to being yet another part of their character that is important um i feel personally that would be more balanced to depict this this way where just because christian as a jungle elf um is being validated in his original desire to be a chef does not necessarily mean that it's a bad thing that he became a warrior to begin with because He's still following the traditions of his people, right? It's just that this is a reaffirmation of even though what he really, what his real calling in, his, in life is not the same as what his people would want for him, um, they both end up having their roles to play, in both in society and also for themselves, more or less. Because people are both more than what's the community that they are born in, what they surround themselves in, um, want them to be, and yet at the same time are more than just what they themselves are, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's kind of like, I guess it's multifaceted, I guess. Um, we are, multi, we are, we are multifaceted. That doesn't make any sense. It's something like that. Something like that. I love it. it. This is why I tell people you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, discredit your ideas before you test them out or see how other people feel about them first or give them a honest look through. Um, the idea, this the the obsession some people have with making a truly unique and original work is such an illusion. There is almost no such thing um pretty much all stories are in some manner going to be a culmination and juxtaposition of various uh human struggles some of whom of some of which some people will relate to more than others i mean even in this story it's not necessarily unique but it is unique in the way that it's been the simpsons did it mentality what do you mean by this, uh, King Kuma? I actually don't watch Simpsons as much as I used to when I was younger. Is it like, is there like this um thing where if the Simpsons did an episode in it, you're not allowed to do an episode in it or something? Or... So I sometimes feel like the Family Guy, a Family Guy, um, borrows from the Simpsons and like tries to beat the Simpsons, but it's somehow more offensive. Actually, I feel like a lot of adult cartoons try to beat the Simpsons and. They have varying degrees of success. It's actually a South Park joke. What ends up happening is one character is discouraged from going through with ideas because it's already been done. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. The South Park joke. Oh, why am I not surprised? <laughs> South Park is like the king of lampooning everyone else, and they are fairly good at doing it. I, if I might say so. But in reality, The Simpsons takes references from classic media to take their own spin on it. Very good point. And The Simpsons is very unabashed about it. They always did a fairly decent job of lampooning themselves, and that's why they are so successful for so many years. Mm. It's important that I bring, brought this up during our podcast and bring it. It's a, I think it's okay to take ideas from things, but it's good to put your own spin in it. Oh, for sure. A part of the reason I even brought this up first off in the podcast and second off now is because I see a lot of times uh, a lot of VTubers who fret a lot about their VTuber lore or are afraid of getting started because they are afraid that their ideas are not good enough or they're not unique enough or that... Someone else did something. Did it first, and I always feel bad when this sort of um, when this sort of uh, mentality comes up. Because it come, happens all the time, not just in VTubing, but in every form of art. 
film, writing, drawing, what have you. Because it's the wrong mentality to have. I'll just straight up say it. It's wrong to go into the entertainment industry or in any form of arts thinking that you must be hyper unique. And it's wrong to criticize others for not being hyper unique. You need to be very careful about accusing people of plagiarism because unless it's blatantly obvious that it's a one-to-one -one recreation of your own and they th are going out of their way to say that they did everything themselves and that they are completely unique and they had no inspiration, you, you sh just shouldn't do it because, believe it or not, that form of plagiarism to the point where it's one-to-one -one recreation unabashedly, unabashedly the same thing, it's not, it's really not that common. Not even amongst, like, Skinner Box trashy mobile mmo stuff i mean if it's to the point where they need to they need to be called out it's usually because they copy and pasted and are committing copyright infringement <laughs> let me read uh back here really quick it's kind of like vtuber designs you know some folks and have uh, some folks tend to have things in their designs based on something that they have a heart for i'm one of those rare vtubers that don't care about their own lore respect to those who put in the work into it very valid, very valid. And yeah, I mean, it's also very true. Like, I myself am not ashamed to admit that a lot of people believe, surprisingly, people have not pointed this out about my character. But I am not afraid to admit that my own character design is based loosely off of uh, Kumi Shirasaka from uh, Idol Master Cinderella Girls, which is, believe it or not, I don't. Play Idol Master. I actually based this off of a live 2D avatar that I found on the Steam Workshop for Face Rig way back before I was a VTuber, back when I used to just play around with uh, Face Rig as a program when I was streaming on Discord. Now, I did base the other half of my character design off of an original character for one of my own science fiction novels, Mercury 9. And that character herself is based off of heavy inspiration from Blade Runner and also Neuromancer. <laughs> and I love both of those works, so I'm not afraid to tell people that my cyberpunk fiction is heavily based off the cyberpunk uh, pillars that have come before it. Lol face rig? Yeah, I know, right? Old school right there. Uh, v speaking program, which is now, uh, unfortunately, discontinued. Um, I recently went to Facebook Steam, Steam page, and it's no longer even for sale, and it's very dilapidated in a very dilapidated state. Developers saw that VTubing was popping off, so they discontinued Facebook and now offer something called Animes, which requires a subscription to use, uh, which is kind of pointless when there are so many VTubing programs out there that you could use for free of charge with no subscription fee, or for a one-time payment, you know, like a VTuber Studio, like. A PRPR Live, like, there's a, there's a bunch of other out there. Animes is very cringe, I, I agree. Uh, also very jank. I would definitely not suggest animes over other programs that are out there for, out there for use. Um, that being said, it was, at the time, a very interesting program to get into VTubing, or at least to... Kind of dip your waters into it. I liked the fact that the Hads team workshop support. So you really could just mix or match avatars that people uploaded. Unfortunately, some of those were ripped. And some of those were taken without other people's permission. So you keep out, keep lookout for that. I definitely wouldn't suggest using it for VTubing like on Twitch and YouTube. Or if you want to get into like, you know, full-time VTubing like I, like a bunch of us in the uh, industry or in the industry are doing because eventually you will be slapped to a dmca and rightfully so but it was very nice to like kind of dip your hands into <laughs> and also there's the fact that live eat are getting a live e2d a live 2d avatar is a little bit more difficult than getting a vroid one since you could just make your own vroid avatar with not a, in my opinion it's a lot easier to make a VROID avatar than it is to make a live 2D one. I don't even know where to begin with learning to rig a live 2D avatar while you could just kind of pop into VROID. You'll need to still sculpt and sculpt your model, make your own hair, and, you know, mess around your eye textures and textures in general, and uh, get some cute clothes for yourself. But at least the rigging part is already done. 
Wait. Now everything else, you'll still need to learn how to, you know, get hands to work and how to stream your avatar in there. And I, you all know, I've spent hours just trying to get this two D or to get this um, uh, dual PC streaming setup running, and I had to because my gaming PC is fairly out of date and is not strong enough to run my Vroid avatar or Vroid programs in addition to running video games. But I digress. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say that you're actually that rare, King Kuma. There is a few VTubers out there that they just VTube as themselves, or they just create a concept that they think that they really like portraying themselves as, and are like, "fuck it, with the rest." Um, when I started VTubing, I did not have an established lore for my character. I was just sort of adapting it over time over the past several months of VTubing and um, I decided to cheat and basically just adapted a lot of my own science fiction into my, the lore of my avatar. Uh, let me get a hydrate reading here before I pass out. One second. But um... Even if you're not going to create lore, for those of you listening in who may be new to VTubing, or are not new to VTubing, it doesn't matter, whichever. I don't want, I feel bad when people keep themselves from jumping into the industry, jumping into this whole content creation thing, because they think that their stuff is not good enough, is not ready. I really believe that it's better um, to jump in into it and to get involved and to start interacting with people starting making or start networking making relationships before you're ready and the reason i say that is because in my personal experience um telling yourself that you're not ready and that you're only and you'll only get into things when you are ready quickly becomes an excuse that you tell yourself subconsciously not do anything to subconsciously um never get started and to give you an idea of where i'm coming from with this um i actually graduated from university in a bachelor's in english and creative writing i was formerly a journalist um and one of the most common excuses i've seen that i experienced i've seen going through college, going through my uh, undergraduate, um, are people saying, oh, I wish I could get into writing. Oh, I wish I could get published. Oh, I could do this. I wish I could do that. And I asked, I go up to these people, I'm like, oh, sure, why don't you just do it? Um, Can I see your body of work? Do you have any uh, writing that you could showcase? And they're like, um, no. Um, and I'm like, okay, then you want to... You, is there anything that you can showcase? You want to like start hosting your content? They're like, oh well, you see, I'm not good enough at writing yet. I I feel embarrassed about showing off my work, and I'm like, I sympathize, but you need to you need to at least start, at least get something written on the page, and then let's say we get past that stage where they're like, okay, um, let's see, let's do a little uh, writing workshop here. Let's uh, do a little bit of creative writing, and then. They feel this extreme need, and believe me, I understand where this need's coming from. They feel this extreme need to, after they write something down, regardless of the quality of it, they feel this extreme need to delete their own work. And I'm like, no, stop, stop. It, I understand that it's cringy. I was, I was a newbie writer too. It probably is cringy. It's probably really bad fanfiction. But please, don't delete your work. Don't erase it. Don't. Resist the urge to control Z everything. You need to have a body of work to look back on. So you have something to look back and say. To compare to your current work and be like. I've improved. Let me read back what's uh, being written here in chat really quick. You have to bleed and get burned to cook great things. Just pull the trigger and see where your creative journey takes you. Exactly, King Kuma. We just had a VTubing tournament last night. In the fighting game space. Fighting martial arts and fighting games, getting better at video games and getting better in the creative aspect and creative writing and getting better in the creative arts are very much alike in the sense where you must suck first. 
before you get good. This whole thing where people are born with natural talent, let me tell you, in the, in the professional world, professionals spit on people on the concept of natural talent. People that start off with natural talent just happen to pick up things better than better or faster than others. It does not it is not an indicator of them being super successful later in life. If anything, a lot of times people that start off with natural talent are sometimes doomed to fail because it's taken for granted that they will just coast. When I was had a short stint as someone who's learning to play piano, one of the first p writing books I had on learning to play piano actually had this whole thing in the beginning where it also, the person who wrote this piano learning book also went to this diatribe about how people that think they have natural talent for the musical arts are doomed to failure because they end up like avoiding the basics. They end up thinking that they can just coast through and will just succeed on succeed on their talent alone. But they must learn, they must learn to fail. They must allow themselves to start off as a noob and get better over time. I went into this and had no idea how to photo or video edit. Now I can comfortably make scuff meme pics and schedule vids. I it may not be very good or popular beat but happy with not having this back that background. I know right? When I started VTubing, I started getting back a lot of hobbies and a lot of uh things that I kind of did when I was younger and just kind of pushed it aside because suddenly it was necessary to know for this uh, VTuber space. I had to reteach myself how to I had to re-download programs like Krita. I had to teach myself, okay. How do I into um, basic ba Babby's first video editing on YouTube? How do I into make thumbnail <laughs> and just little things like that? Um, part of that is because I personally like to do a lot of things myself. I kind of get anxious when people offer to do things for me, and I'm really grateful. Don't get me wrong, but I always feel bad that people are doing stuff for me. So I try to do a lot of stuff on my own, and this forces me to kind of relearn things, and it's okay. For those things to be to be amateurish or noobish, because a lot of people in this space are in the same place, and not everyone's going, not everyone is going to be Gargura, not everyone's going to have corporate backing to do all the shit for you. It's okay to do things and have it be scuff. There's a reason we joke in the YouTubing space about scuff this, scuff that all the time. Um, a lot of people will get anxious initially about things breaking down in stream. I'm, I just recently discovered that I don't take enough breaths when I'm going on a spiel, so I start losing air. Give me a second here. <laughs> I'm also going off on a tangent right now, so feel free to stop me if I'm like going too far off topic. But um, yeah, King Kuma, you bring up another great point. It's okay to be a noob. It's okay to be scuffed. In anything you do, you must allow yourself to be scuffed first. You must allow yourself to record the scuffness because you need this to, you need to build up the ladder, the rungs of the ladder that you're climbing so that you could look back down when you're really high up there and see and think to yourself, wow, look how far I've come. I mean, if you look at my old VODs on my uh, YouTube channel, <laughs> man, my, 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 my streams used to be pretty bad. <laughs> uh, based, um, uh, based, uh, based, uh, Seribots is a credit team auto banning this, uh, auto banning these, uh, spam bots going on over here. If y'all don't already have it, I highly suggest a bot called SiriBot, spelled Sierra Echo Romeo, whatever you why is the yellow is in the phonetic alphabet. It's constantly updated and it will remove a lot of headaches for you by auto banning a lot of uh, spam bots and especially more importantly, uh, raid bots. <laughs> uh, give me a moment here. I'm Started to lose the blood to my head. 
Even? <sighs> anyway. I've completely lost my train of thought of where I draw off in this field, but um But yeah, um We just had a VTuber fighting game tournament last night. As usual, there were actually a lot of new people new to the community, many of whom unfortunately were absolutely destroyed. Some of them took it pretty well. Um Losing is a fact of life. It could be very harsh. It could feel very bad when you're a newbie to the fighting game community. <laughs> but you just have to sort of learn to let it roll off your shoulders. Some people, I'm, I'm sad to say, aren't going to take it that well. And they will get upset. And they'll lash out. You just need to learn to roll with the punches. It's lashing out, taking out your negativity on other people. It's, not, it's both not a good look. And it's not a way to learn. I see people in the VTuber space all the time who they are upset with their own growth. They are either not growing fast enough or they think other people are gaining members, gaining followers, gaining popularity too fast, and they lash out at them. Don't be one of those people. This is a community that prides itself on community. You need to your gain network, you need to make friends, you need to gather people around of you who can help support you, and you can help support them. It's mutual support, right? If you create a environment around yourself that's based on negativity, that's based on toxicity, that's based on tearing other people down, that's all you're going to have for your own streams. Those same people will turn on you. I've seen it happen multiple times. I've seen people, I've seen even large VTubers, or they're not really large. They just think they're large because they have four digits in their Twitter and YouTube and their Twitter and VTuber spaces. They're actually we're all actually minnows in a fucking ocean compared to the big boys, the big girls. But I've seen VTubers whose own communities have eaten themselves alive because they've created a community based around shitting on other people, and when chickens come to roost, they've been they were shat on themselves, and there's no one left to watch out for them. Don't be those VTubers. The only time I really had a bad time with events was when the game was not, just not having a good time that day. Almost got DQ'd in multiverses because I couldn't connect to matches. Yeah, stuff like that. Stuff like that is not your fault. I mean, that's just technical issues, man. Uh, feels good when you're a small timer and you stomp on a popular dude. It's like witnessing a crime. <laughs> it really is. For me... Uh, just getting at least one win off of someone that uh, is super good in the community is an ego boost. <laughs> just, just enough to say, ha, I got you once. It may have been once out of like 100 tries, but it was still one in 100 tries. Whereas before, I would have been perfected by the same person like repeatedly. Kilo, welcome to the stream. It's been a while. Yes, you are a pirate today. Who doesn't? How are you doing today? <laughs> hey, I bursted bad, and you took advantage of it. You know what? I was actually reviewing the vod of that stream, and I really think it could have gone either way. I I made so many mistakes. I was falling into a lot of bad habits. <laughs> um, uh, it is what. But you know, you're right. It is what it is. And thank you for being a good sport about. Um, I'm sure if there, I'm sure if. Even the smallest thing were different yesterday. Like maybe you got you had more sleep, or if I was if I had gotten less sleep, or if I was not better, or if I was not better prepared, it could have totally gone the other way. But oh, thank you, King Kuma. Really appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, I had no. I'm at the level I was, I knew that there was, I had no chance against that loser.exe, and I don't mind that, you know. Um, I'm also pretty chill with that loser. They're a great VTuber and a great person, so I was just happy to finally, like, get, or to finally get a lead, to not go uh, 2 and, uh, or 0 2, <laughs> go 1 and 2 instead. Eventually, someday, I hope to at least get my, since though, I've been creating like tier goals for myself, 
uh, my first goal was to not go zero and two, and now my next goal is to, if it's not to, um, if it's not to, what's the word I'm looking for? If it's not too ambitious, I would like to eventually reach the top eight, even if it's just you know eighth to get to see see my uh, derpy avatar pop up in one of those um uh end of tournament uh Twitter 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 posts. That would be really cool. I don't care if it like takes a year or two years of getting good at uh, Strive. I'm pretty sure Guilty Gear Strive will still be popular enough for that to happen, but that would be cool to happen at least once. I could pull excuses like hungover, like sleep, didn't eat, I got played Bridget, but at the end of the day, you still fought my Mei and challenged her. You gotta always try and play your best regardless of the opponent, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's very true. I mean, there are a lot of times that I could, I find myself thinking in the back of my head, oh, this happened, or oh, this happened, or oh, this happened, but I'm, I don't want to, I don't like giving excuses. Um, I just don't like giving excuses in general. For me, Every time, every failing on my part is an excuse to, it just means that I have to get better. And sometimes I do get like depressed and I fall into this trap of thinking of, oh, I can never get better. There's all these other things getting in the way. But, um, it's just, I don't think it's true. I don't, I'm, it's true that there always be someone better than you, but I don't like the, I don't like the acceptance of, oh, you've peaked and you cannot get better. Just because even if there is a best survivor's bias involved, there's not really an objective way to measure whether that is true or not. It's not like I'm ancient. I'm not I'm not a zoomer by any means. I'm sure my reaction time is not going to be as well good as someone that's like ten years younger than me, but who gives a fuck? <laughs> that's not an excuse that's still not an excuse it just means you have to work around that kind of work around that thing otherwise i mean you could say the same thing about uh character tier lists in strive um people will say oh well clearly the shoto the shotos are gonna be top tier etc bull fucking shit i play me man i see i see outstanding maze all the time for one reason or another <laughs> but uh and I got smoked by a fucking marvelous uh, level Faust player, so we're not even going to go there with the whole uh, Faustism and low tier shit because I don't believe that. I think if I, I think it's just a matter of um, you're a good Faust, you're a good Faust. You will ups you will upset the tier list one way or another. Um, but um, yeah. So that's a thing. <laughs> Um, I'll admit that after after my win against King Kuma, the first thing I did was because I was still in shock. Was pop into our own personal Discord and type and do an at everyone be like, I want to set everyone. <laughs> I want to set and immediately got destroyed by uh, it got immediately got destroyed the next round. But I didn't care. I I was too I was flying too high. <laughs> and for those of you who who also participate in the VTuber fighting game tournament, you too will one day feel the elation that I felt of getting or getting over someone that you previously thought was or thought that you could not get over. And it'll be the greatest feeling. And rightfully so. Just make sure to uh always be humble in defeat and also be uh, generous in generous in victory. I think is that how it goes? Something like that. You always want to be thankful for the good things that come your way in life. Because life is a cruel mistress, and as soon and it will hand you an L just as easily as it hand you a W. But I digress. Let us go ahead and continue with the, um, continue here with the Lulz cast. Our, our podcast only lasts about an hour. Uh, the rest of this is really just us uh, shitposting about video games, so we're going to end it at around uh one hour around 60 minutes and then we're going to actually try and get some writing done so y'all can actually see uh how my creative writing goes i'm kind of a bit nervous because i haven't done any serious creative writing in months which means i'm really 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 
a really, um, really shit. What's the word? I'm really out of practice. I'm what's called a seat of your pants writer. Usually I don't do shit like this where I write in outlines. Usually I just jump in and write and let the, uh, let the flow of consciousness take me, take me for a ride. The reason why I'm even doing this here is one, to, I need to relearn what Christian's backstory is because it's been a few months. Thank you for the hydrate redeem, Vimboy. I uh, thank you for the head pads as well. I'll actually need to refill my water fairly soon. And then I'll need to grab breakfast. <laughs> Relax, I got this thing. But um I'm doing so I'm basically re-listening to Christian's backstory. First off, because I need to relearn what his backstory is. And second off, for your for y'all's benefit, I want so y'all can hear the story that I'm going to be attempting to write. Uh Doing a little bit of outlining. As a prospective, a prospective creative writer, you can either do what I do, or you can do you could set up an ad, create an outline before you start writing, or you could do a combination of both. Most people actually do a combination of both. They don't do one, or they don't necessarily do one or the other. Do whatever is comfortable to you. I will say that just like in drawing. If you start with an outline and you define yourself um, moving away from an outline and just doing your own thing, don't feel like you need to be. Don't feel like you need to stay locked to any one thing. Creative writing processes are largely arbitrary and largely um, a matter of a spark, a spark of madness, if you will. To quote Robin Williams, so you should feel your. You should allow yourself to. Uh, allow where the inspiration takes you. Although sometimes you do need to give inspiration kickstart a little kick in its pants, so to speak. In the way that, and I'm not sure if you noticed during the course of this podcast, but I was doing my best to allow Christian to come to, to create his character in his own way with as minimal, uh, as minimal influence on my part. Because I try to not overly influence people's writing style. Um, that's a very common thing when you're trying to help someone with writing where you might accidentally influence them a little too much, where they become a little you. We want to allow our children to learn to fly on their own. If they rely too much on their parents, so to speak, you fly when you're gone, they will fall from the air, like from the sky for like a brick. <laughs> Because they didn't learn to grow on their own. Sorry for the sorry for the morbid kind of metaphor going on there, but <laughs> going to be amaze balls. Well, I certainly hope so. The entire story has culminated to this point. Um, it. Vacation Memboy. When I do creative writing, I get really drunk really fast. Then pace back and forth in a room alone, having a screaming conversation with myself. Big fucking mood, I do that too, oh my god. <laughs> or straight up embodying a character and then narrative narrate the entire story in a single take with a voice recorder in the corner of the room. You know, that's something that I should do more often. Sometimes I sort of like, I don't narrate the character out loud, but sometimes I will just like become the character and I kind of like enter this thing where I am acting at the character so sometimes people would walk by they would see me doing all these weird faces and stuff and they'd be like lols are you okay and i'm like i'm fine you didn't see anything uh with a voice recorder in the corner of the room then just type it out two days later after the hangover is finished <laughs> um i try i often had this at work where I would get my best writing done when I during lunchtime, and I would get all these uh, little notebooks out, and I just <laughs> right, 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 right. Let me show. Let me show it on. Right, 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 right. Oh man, I'm really talking way too fast without taking enough breaths. For sure, am I? 
Uh, I kind of feel like this pain in my head when I talk too fast without breathing enough. Kind of like not getting enough oxygen to my head, I guess. <laughs> Give me a second here, chat. Kind of like feels like being in church or being in a really hot environment where you just start, you know, feeling, feel uncomfortable and you just sort of collapse. Don't worry, chat. I'm fine. Chat, you also probably noticed that I have not been cleaning, complaining about my left ear lately. So it's definitely not a headset problem. I think it's definitely a sinus pressure problem or something. Just something to do with the weather or whatever. It's been getting pretty cool, or fairly cool over here where I live in the States lately. Uh, the weather has been getting steadily colder. Which means the atmospheric pressure around here has also been getting a little better. So, thankfully, I think this means that I probably don't need to go to the doctor or anything. And I don't need to get a new headset anytime soon, which is good. Because I like my Razer Black Shark V2. I really do not want to spend money on a new equipment anytime soon. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> I will admittedly say that this is... That even though I feel like I've seen a story like this before, I literally cannot remember what story that might have been. To anyone else, this would be the most unique thing in the world because, believe it or not, not everyone else, not everyone has read Toriko, Shokugeki no Soma, or Cooking Master Boy, or Dungeon Meshi, or. These are all some of my favorite cooking mangas, and I totally recommend y'all check them out if you get the chance. anything like that so to them yeah, this sort of thing would have been completely fresh and very unique yeah yeah i'm quite impressed on dungeon meshi quite like uh, niche yeah i didn't expect even though, he, even though it's quite known it's not that like popular well you also think like when you read dungeon meshi you can tell that the person who the mangaka who was writing it was also definitely a D, D player at some point in their life or probably is yeah. just because i didn't when i was reading that i thought it was just gonna be a just come dungeon meshi is usually translated in english as delicious and dungeon for those of you who may have a difficult time finding it online but you should be able to find it it's also being adapted into an anime soon if i recall correctly comedic played for laughs sort of thing but the way it's structured i didn't expect there to be so much not breathing enough makes you feel blah, not because of lack of oxygen, but from buildup of carbon dioxide. We can go many minutes without oxygen, but we'll die from not expelling the carbon dioxide. Yeah, you got a good point there. You're doing a very good job of role-playing as an artificial intelligence, am I? Or, or I mean, or the, uh, the person I'm blackmailing to uh, run the stream is starting to suffer from la lacks of oxygen. <laughs> Just being a troll, sir. You know, you're being, you're, you're, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Plot and backstory be, and so much woven into the various humanoid factions, all their, the fact that the dungeon itself is a huge major plot point and has so much lore built into it itself and other things that are spoilers, which I will not mention, <laughs> um, but. It's also a great example from a storytelling perspective of layers upon layers of um, gradually building up a world, not by shitting all the exposition out in one moment, but by gradually introducing concepts um, as they become relevant after your audience has taken time to absorb the stuff before it. Um, so we start off with, there is a dungeon, there is a Guild, you have a bunch of adventurers here who previously entered the dungeon and one of them got captured by a dragon. So they're going back into the dungeon to rescue that person. And it just so happens that two of the characters are have chosen to, to have taken to eating monsters for food as opposed to... This is a very typical Dungeons and Dragons setup for a plot. Need a breathe redeem? 
I could say something but be very offensive and very bad taste. And I could also think of people making some bad jokes about that, but um at the same time Hey Death, how are you doing this morning? Yeah Damn it. <laughs> Thank you for the throw redeem. Um but yeah no ouch. I wouldn't mind putting a breathe redeem here. Especially if I'm going to be keep doing uh, more writing workshops and moving forward. Might as well, right? That reminds me, uh, chat. Moving forward... Ah. I'm not sure if y'all have I told y'all about this, but there's actually a writing game that some VTubers have been playing called... Uh, Frantic Fanfic. And I do have a lot of writing VTuber friends, so I will eventually want to do a writing collab where we play that together. If any of y'all are interested in doing and playing that with me, and doing, a collab, hey, doing that uh, kind of collab with me, please let me know. And we'll set something up. Bring food like every other adventure. And that, that ends up not being like the most important thing in the story. It just happens mm. to be the thing that... It just happens to be a thing that happens in the story. And <laughs> it's just stuff like that. Like, with what we've created so far over the past uh, 15 minutes of just... You're out of points for now, you mean. Talking. You have you have a jungle elf who grew up wanting to be a chef, but neither his mom or his dad, even though his mom was also a chef, saw value in their son being a chef, so they pushed him into being a warrior instead. However, and he... The subscribing gif? Wait, does subscribing give you double the points generation? That explains a lot. There's some people I have like tens of thousands of points and I never understood why. I did not know that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, totally subscribe to my content to get access to free emojis, to support the stream, and also to, to get more chances to throw shit in my face. <laughs> 1 1.2 is tier 1. Hmm. Became a warrior to defend the town from the village from monsters. So it's not exactly a, it's not it's a it's a sort of thing that is not only that is only um requests it's not only just a thing that's kind of expected of him being a man in this a uh, a male elf, but also mm -hmm. something that's necessary for the survival of the village. So. It's like his duty, right? It's kind yeah. of a combination. It's a like the um, juxtaposition between duty, what you want for your life, and what you need to do with your life. Which normally is very subjective, but in this case is very real because it literally involves the survival of your community. However, here comes a, a situation, an out-of-context problem. They literally call it out-of-context. An out-of-context pro problem is when a situation or thing that's completely separate from the environment, the setting, swoops in and completely fucks everything up. Someone has come in, robbed a very special item and a very special item from your village, and you while your village could go to its typical way of getting it back, it's not um the best way, and they have decided that the skill that they previously thought was worthless in your character has suddenly has suddenly become possibly the most important thing to solving this crisis. It's a very it's layers upon layers basically. There's a lot of tropes. There's a lot of content. Um, how do I say this? It's a substance, really. Yeah to your character and just think this was all done by you i didn't do much all i did was ask you a bunch of questions Incidentally, <laughs> <laughs> chat uh, this is actually one of my favorite exercises when i am creating a character uh take the character in your mind pretend that you're in a coffee shop in a bar or something you're the bartender you're the barista whatever and ask them questions, ask them about their life, how's the kids, how's the family, do you have kids, what'd you go to school for, that sort of thing. 
see what they say say to you back or if they say anything at all how they react this is one of the easiest ways to develop a character by first acting as if they're a real person because they might not be a real person that meets person here a person in meet space they might be a malicious artificial intelligence that only lives on twitch and has to use who has to uh blackmail people on in the meet space world into doing their bidding so that they can continue to grow money on twitch on their platform totally not speaking from experience but um yeah ask them questions uh treat them first Think of them not as an object, think of them as a person, as a thing, as a thing with thing, as a person with feelings. First off, this also solves another, a number of problems. It's a lot harder to write a glorified Gary Stu, Mary Sue. It's hard to write a um, political mouthpiece, a soapbox, if you are treating your character as a person. Second, it will make the immediately makes the character more relatable because if you treat them as a person, the reader will come to treat them as a person too. Third, it gives you an excuse to develop the character because you are learning about the character. You're learning things about the character, things that you could create content off of, that you can create a story around. Fourth. There is no fourth. I can't think of a fourth. Why create more numbers than we need to, chat? <laughs> yeah, that's well, that's sort of quite cool. So we basically have the central plot. The central plot appears to be that your character is going um, on this quest to get this uh ceremonial knife back in order to do so he near literally needs to enter a cooking competition um since we have the main plot this stuff doesn't necessarily matter i guess because unless you want to create the ending of your story already you don't need to you can either leave it open in it like a lot of people do with their vtuber lore or you can create an ending um that's really i actually in retrospect unless you're doing this part of this huge character arc thing and there are some vtubers who do this actually i've seen a few vtubers now that they have this sort of ongoing story going on that they do that sort of like an arg an alternate reality game that they have running through twitch and twitter um, so they might have an ending, so to speak, for VTubers, unless you're planning on quitting VTubing anytime soon, I wouldn't suggest creating an ending for your character. If you have to graduate and you don't want your followers to, like, be left on read forever, then it makes sense, but not really necessary otherwise. Now, as an exception, I've seen VTubers who part of their lore... Um, have this thing where it explains how to become a VTuber, and at the end, that kind of serves as like the ending lore, and the rest is history, and they just make up the rest as they go along, and that that works. That works too. Otherwise, not necessary to create a conclusion to your story. Just like in real life, your story only ends when you do. Really up to you. Most people do keep their VTuber lores open, and it obviously like. I mean, I don't know if I'll ever get get. I don't know if I'll ever get a corporeal body, and escape the clutches of the internet. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to stream anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I think I will leave it open because if Ow. I thank you for the bonk. I have to like if I completed the quest and but um how to say. It? got the knife and went back to the village but then, then that's it i went back to the village and i'm mm -hmm. dead again like um, we're in a unique position where we don't need to necessarily have complete lore as vtubers we 
Yeah. And especially for people that literally interweave their lore into why they're a VTuber, it's probably best that they don't because they kind of need a reason to exist as VTubers, right? <laughs> yeah. Which leads was going to lead into my next question on <laughs> how does VTubing fit into the bigger picture of your lore? Um, I already have an idea. This is not strictly necessary either, but I always feel like you should find a way to integrate the lore of your character is to into what or segue the lore of your character into why are you a VTuber or a literal god or a little demon or from a different universe or whatever have you? Just because I feel like it only can add to your lore. It gives it creates context. For why you exist. What if God were one of us? You have how it could, but I want to hear what I ah! so to accidentally influence them. Damn it, death. <laughs> I don't know how much idea. Uh, I was thinking that maybe when I went like out like the classic um, yeah he, he he appeared in this world and he saw <laughs> all the technology and like what the hell is the pain is weakness leaving the body that... he got isekai into this world well not like directly but uh, an elf village hidden in the jungle then you have to go out into the modern world like huh okay this is different I see um maybe you know, at some point while trying to learn about about the, the how how much Cooking stuff as he could, he saw, I don't know, another VTuber that was also cooking. Yeah. And he was like, huh. There's actually a lot of cooking okay. VTubers out there, surprisingly. Hmm. I follow and a few of them, I'm actually moved to a couple. Like, the, the idea grew on him. Really? And that uh, that might, might be the, like, the backstory, how I, I, I went. I ended up here. I see. I was thinking that given it have been a cooking bee to King Kuma. Is there any reason why you've just not you have not been a cooking or uh, gone into go or uh, you've been a cooking bee tuber? I mean if you're willing to share, of course. The cooking, the incidentally, the cooking VTubers I'm talking about, they're both cooks, isn't their VTuber avatars are cooks, and they themselves are also cooks in real life, which is kind of cool. Uh, and one of them actually cooks in stream, Onigiri. Uh, she actually cooks in stream using this hybrid system of her VTuber avatar and her real world hands. Um, Necromantic Chef, I don't know if he cooks on stream, but he is actually a chef in real life, and his identity is as a Kind of a uh, femboy or fem catboy chef VTuber. Literally in his name, Necromantic Chef. And of course, you got Christian VT here, who is also a chef, a jungle love chef. I have a 10 year background in cooking, but I didn't think it was something I really wanted to talk about content wise, but I end up talking about food outside of food a lot. I see, I see. <laughs> That's really interesting um, that you have a 10 year background in cooking. Oh, shit. Let me wait for the ads to end, and then I'll continue.
Is it over? Are the ads finished? Mm-hmm. All right, cool, cool. Um, so basically, I was saying, uh, I'm really into as someone who's a food enthusiast myself, even though I'm a terrible chef, I, I would love to uh, bounce stuff off of you regard food wise. Even I originally was going to suppress a lot of my in real life hobbies to really play the role of uh, AI stuck in the online sort of thing, but I can't help but post a lot of my hobbies on Twitch and Twitter, especially like I'm I. I'm kind of a uh, amateur, a uh, amateur horticulturist. I love growing stuff. A lot of those things happen to be food. I was thinking of saving money for a food truck and jokingly used my VTuber for my truck mascot and stream advertising my food lol. That'd be really cool if you set up your own food truck and you used King Kuma as your like uh, Kuma truck or something for as your branding. I don't know any VTubers who run their own food trucks, so that would be that would be a hell of a uh, <laughs> a hell of a um which we call it content a hell of a combination something like that. It'd be neat as well. It would just be that would just be really fucking cool. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the Kuma truck. <laughs> uh, what kind of food do you like, or do you specialize in, or do you like enjoy? Do you do you like to prepare that sort of thing? I know Italian, but still working on my menu might just be a modern take on Filipino street food. Whoa, bro! I love Filipino street food. Or we actually have a food truck over here where I live that is that used to specialize in that. That's pretty much all. That they were like the first Filipino food truck in my town, and we don't have that many Fil that many Filipino eateries around here. They don't survive that long. Part of the reason they don't survive that long is because people will always misconstrue them as being Chinese when they are. There's an obvious difference. Speaking as a Filipino myself. But, um, yeah, a Filipino street food truck, that would be sick. I'm kind of jealous. I'm kind of jealous. I'm not sure what state you are. I'm not sure what state you reside in, but if I was ever in town, I would love to stop by that. <laughs> Italian food is sick too. Um, a couple of Italian food trucks around here as well. Honestly, even a hollow hollow food truck would be great. Introduce people to the wonders of Filipino desserts, especially on summer, really uh, tight summers like this one. Most people don't know that Filipino food not only has influences from Chinese, but also American, Spanish, and Japanese cuisine. Hell yeah, brother! <laughs> well, not only that, but usually when I hear about Filipino food being spoken of outside of Filipino circles, I only ever hear about adobo. Which is funny, because in my own family, we don't eat adobo that much. We eat adobo very rarely, in fact. Uh, I post a lot of my own of our Filipino food on my Twitter account, but we usually eat a lot of nilaga over here, a lot of bistec tagalog, a lot of everything else besides adobo. <laughs> the thing is, the culture of food changes over time, and it's without the introduction of these cultures that food doesn't change. That's very true. Very true. Tocino sliders, everyone, bruh, Tocino. <laughs> Ayo. Uh, good to know. You're making me hungry. <laughs> Holy shit, Tocino. Did you know Tocino translates as bacon? For some reason, from our big translates as bacon. Which is funny because in the Philippines, uh, bacon and Tocino are two different things. Which is weird too because 
Ticino is made from the same cut of meat as bacon. It's still belly fat, but it's a, a kind of belly. It's uh, still prepared a different way. It's still marinated a different way. Ticino tends to be sweet for one thing. Bacon is not typically sweet. Fuck, I had Ticino just like yesterday too <laughs> for lunch. It's so messy to prepare, but and so expensive, but oh my god. It's also so bad for you. It's literally pork fat, a pork belly, but bacon's bad for you too. Who cares? I actually prefer to see no over bacon. <laughs> you can tell I'm Filipino because I'm just going off on fucking food right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you just happen to enjoy Filipino food or are you also Filipino yourself? Are you also Pinoy yourself, basically? Oh! Rip. Yeah, all my stuff, all my peripherals are falling over again. I'm fine. I'm fine. Nothing broke. My uh, mouse and keyboard, or keyboard just fell off. But just fell off the, uh, fell off my desk again. You're Filipino, but not a good one. I don't know the language, nor do I go to watch the boxing match. Uh, don't worry. I'm Pinoy myself, but I barely understand. I barely, I can barely speak Tagalog. I speak just enough to know when the other Filipino VTubers are, talk are uh, uh, talking shit, which they don't. Every Pinoy VTuber I've met so far that I've befriended has been very respectful. Um, I've also kind of been a little bit paranoid about revealing that I'm Pinoy because there's some Pinoys online that are not very fond of uh, Phil Ams, are not very fond of Filipino Americans. They're like, you're not really Filipino. I, uh, oh, not to get too, not to get political. I'll, I'll keep this short, I swear. But sometimes I'm kind of, uh, I'm sometimes kind of self-conscious of revealing that I'm actually Pinoy because I'm afraid of like people being like, what do you mean you're Pinoy? Look at your avatar, you're not Pinoy at all. You can, I bet you can't even speak Tagalog. I'm like, I, I just, I can understand it, but I can't speak it very well. I'm trying. There's a reason I immerse myself a lot, and a lot of my friends are, a lot of my, a lot of my uh, Southeast Asian friends are, in fact, Filipino. Um, for that reason, but a lot, most of them have been pretty respectful, and I like hanging out with them anyway. Um, I wouldn't say that you're not a good Phil, you're not a good Filipino just because you don't know the language nor just because you don't watch the boxing matches. Uh, Manny Pacquiao has long since retired anyway. Um, and we all know the, who actually wanted me with the fights, am I right? But uh, just enjoying Filipino food in itself is a, in my, in my opinion, is a way to express your, is to, is a part, is it still a, it's still a valid way of um, enjoying your heritage, in my opinion. In my opinion. There's this weird thing where, for some reason, every time Panois come together online, we all end up talking about food one way or another. <laughs> uh, going back to what we were saying earlier, it might be because of the fact that there is not that much. There's not as much consumption of Filipino food culture here in the States that we are able to identify that Pinoy's are in the are able to identify each other online. Or at least I really wish uh, more people would experience Filipino food outside of just adobo. And not and I don't just say that because I myself don't need to eat adobo that much, but because there's so much more to it than just adobo. I kind of uh, feel a little warm inside when I see Ube pop up on a cartoon of all places. Like, I'd be like, "Yo, is that Ube? is that Ube?" <laughs> People be watching this cartoon, and be like, "Whoa, that's what's that weird, colorful uh, spiral um, purple cake thing?" And I'm just like, "Bruh, it's Ube cake. It's Ube cake." <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. To me, you are plenty Pinoy. From one Pinoy VTuber to another. Mm. 
Also, there's this weird thing where, for some reason, every Pinoy I meet plays fighting games. It's like a it's like a Filipino thing to play fighting games. Chika Chika is Pinoy. You're Pinoy. A bunch of other people are Pinoy. But I digress. Onwards, back to the stream, everyone. <laughs> that this village sounds very isolated perhaps they went to vtubing as a for <laughs> i know right optimus brian <laughs> i forgot how i figured out that chica was filipino i don't know if he found out that i was filipino first or if i found out that he was filipino it might have been his accent he's kind of got the pinoy accent going on there or something like that. Actually, he might have joked about his internet because, or he might have joked about his internet. And that's how I found out. Something like that. <laughs> or to as a way to make money to continue the journey to join the competition. But the way you make it sound sounds more like he found it as a side hobby. But then. One has to wonder where did he find time to do this side hobby if he's supposed to be on this mission to join a cook competition so that he can get back to ceremonial knife to get back to the village. I okay, I actually had okay. I don't know I, I, I told them the, there was like a special like cops to enter the the tournament, but I like eh, I will not uh, gonna re remark it much. But now that you say it, then it could be like to raise funds to to help the mission because the the village doesn't have any money like like out of money. Mm -hmm. That could be the reason. Although I don't even have affiliated, so you're not even an affiliate yet. No, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Really, I'm not I thought you were. That's strange. Hmm. Yeah, I my account is quite old. Like I, I have been streaming like Skelly for six years already. Really? Shit! I didn't yeah. realize. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm old ish streamer, but I I I I'll never like. But no, it's not that I, I didn't took it. I yo everyone, let's help Christian finally become affiliate. I think he actually might have been affiliate become affiliate. Since his podcast was first done, I honestly don't remember. But either way, there's my boy Christian, Christian uh, the uh, Jungle Elf. For any of y'all who would like to check out his content, he mostly plays FPS games. He's actually a uh, pro Counter Strike player. He got into playing uh, Halo Infinite uh, competitively as well. I'm not sure if he still plays though, because Halo Infinite's been having so many problems lately, so much drama. But I do did see that he started getting back to CS:GO. So seriously, but. I didn't have the hardware or the internet or the time back then to, to do stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I actually see. like uh, started like streaming hard, maybe nine, uh, 2019 ish. Hmm. Then the VTuber stuff started happening and I was like, eh, yeah, I may do it. I, mm -hmm. I was a normal web webcam pretty much. I then, see. You know what? Fuck it. And I started and well, and I I actually grew a lot from from where I started. I I was under fifty followers, and then I'm I I'm already over two hundred now. Not much, but I mean, ah, more than me, I think. <laughs> Although you you grew way way faster. Than I guess in a shorter period of time. Yeah. But... And I think because my account is old, I don't have like the the normal bonus like advertising that a new account has. Like, oh yeah, this is new. Watch it. Possibly. To be fair, I also had helped when I first started VTubing from the community that I originally came from. That oh, and. Okay. 
as much as I hate social media, I've been doing stuff like this for a while. It probably helps that the first that for the first several years after college, I worked in a call center, so I'm kind of been used to the whole talking to people over the phone sort of thing for a while too. So that helped a little bit, I guess. <laughs> Interesting. I am an introvert. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was studying software engineering, then then gastronomy. So imagine I'm basically a shutty that knows how to cook. Oh. <laughs> well, are you? Do you prefer cooking as opposed to being a software engineer? I like both. Oh, but, okay. I mean, cooking is there is some stuff that you you cannot get with code. You know. Hmm. Oh, I was just saying, okay. I understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, 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 I told you, hmm? like, the two that I didn't understand oh, what I said. No I problem. Have a, some, some, some of, a, of an accent. Oh, no problem. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, it's up to you. You can integrate. Uh. Trash can trash zero nine eight. You that's actually a C as in cat there, as opposed to a K. But why did you? What did you mean by this, Kilo? <laughs> Are you watching one of my previous uh, one of the previous vods? Great V two being into. Your lore, however you wish. Rip. I strongly suggest that you do, just because. I mean, I I think the the idea of the money is. But why? What did you mean by this? What do you mean by trash? Why did you write trash can trash zero nine eight? For what purpose? I'm curious. I'm 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 kind of curious now. For what purpose was this done? <laughs> Are you gonna tell the class? Maybe it's just uh, Vomi. It is written Vomi, mommy. I I do not understand. I'm too small brain. Please help me to understand what you are attempting to do. What is a Vomi Mummy? <laughs> it's right next to me? What's right next to me? What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, it says Vomi Mommy. That's correct. Oh, you're talking about, okay, you're talking about these. Sorry, I was kind of confused there for a second. You're reading the uh, recent subscriber and recent follower. But no, Vomi Mommy's correct. I mean, to be fair, I'm still using the old text, the old version of basic that you created. This is not the new one that you created with the uh, better... Um, spacing and whatnot so it's probably harder to read much harder to read fortunately it's, it's, a, it's a it's a good way to be completely honest all right. Saying that <laughs> uh, uh, you, uh, I went like completely like tears to to the battle, and then oh yeah, you need to pay the entry fee. Yeah, entry yeah. fee. Yet another obstacle that cannot be solved with pure violence. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and like okay, uh, yeah. How much of that uh, of this elvish elvish currency that only elf towns use? You need what's that? No, we need this. Like, like. I, uh, modern money, like, 
Basta. How do I get it? <laughs> and so something was born. <laughs> yeah. You know, I also just realized that this plays can or does do you play anything besides Halo and Counter Strike? Well, I'm playing a lot of like survival games right now. I'm playing B the Vintage Story, Minecraft. The... Awesome. I there... may stream tomorrow Evil Nine because another streamer that I want to learn learn it and he's a friend of mine. That's cool. Yeah, I'm actually in Evil right now, I'm just waiting a, a friend. The reason I ask that is because even though it's not necessary, um, a lot of YouTubers do integrate what kind, do uh, correlate the kind of content that they stream with the kind of YouTuber or the kind of character they are. It, the majority of the uh, YouTubers I've seen who are milit have military aesthetic almost always play strategy games and uh, FPS games. Um, Almost all of the FP, almost all of the fantasy VTubers that I know tend to play role playing games, tend to play very comfy things. All these, pretty much, very almost every VTuber I've known that um, is some sort of librarian, some sort of a uh, stay at home witch, some sort of comfy streamer, tends to do something to relate to books. Um, yeah, role play, uh, RPGs, game. Yep. And like a uh, few artificial intelligence YouTubers I know of, they play, they tend to do a lot of old content, a lot of vintage stuff, a lot of um, visual novels, that sort of thing. I myself am a variety streamer, but I do have a strong cyberpunk focus and also a comfy focus. That's why a lot of stuff that you probably have seen on my channel tends to be games that are not mainstream, tends to be AAA stuff or tends to be uh, retro stuff. Doesn't necessarily need to. It doesn't necessarily need to um, be like that. But I was thinking. I was just thinking. I was just kind of laughing to myself that you're a jungle elf who's out of their. Who's pretty much um out of their out of fish out of water environment, having because your your community is kind of isolationist, right? Um, yeah. And yet you've been sent out into a wide world to re claim this um miss this uh ceremonial ceremonial object but you need to also more or less learn the ways of the world to do that so it kind of seems fitting that your content tends to be a combination of games that involve combat and also games that involve survival these are two things that you are both good at and also need to do outside of the community yeah I, I also like uh, talking about like doing uh, playing games or stuff that correlate to exposed. To the mm -hmm. I actually wanted to see any uh, like any cooking games, but I see I see them and they're cool, but I, I don't like like feel uh, the the spark of streaming them. Also, they are sometimes quite expensive because they're mostly simulated. That's fair. <laughs> And th th there was one game I wanted to play, but this it's it's uh, kind of VR. The it's like a, a little kitchen. Oh, kitchen simulator or cooking simulator. I think I think it is. That's a fairly fun game. I've seen quite a few people stream that so far, and it looks like you actually need to cook cook in order to make the recipes, which was interesting. Yeah, no, yeah, that's what I said. It was like cool, but. But remember, it's quite expensive, and I, I don't think my PC can run it because yeah, VR games tend to be quite uh, heavy, unfortunately. Yeah, my my PC can't. just speeding up the video a little bit so we can get through a little bit faster since we have about an hour left of streaming. Really, let's see if we can get some running done. And get to the end of the uh, podcast uh, podcast section. And that'll be our totally. <laughs> and we have about the uh, ten fifty. I I see. Can you see what I said? Yeah. Well, this no, no, wait, it's a non VR version. It should. Uh, it probably has a non VR option, or maybe it was non VR to begin with, and they just happened to install it to uh, add VR. Uh, uh, there is a VR version, and there is, um, I think it's just a little non VR version. I see. Ah. Mm, content. <laughs> Indeed. It seems so wonky without VR, though. Probably. 
it, it's like playing VR chat without VR. Mm -hmm. You're like a statue just standing there. <laughs> or like a VR chat, you can actually play without VR, believe it or not. Obviously, it's limited since you can't use your arms and limbs like you could in VR in a, in a VR rig, but you can do it. I don't, yeah, I, I, I have done it, but still. It... All right. Actually, you know what? I think that was actually the end of our creative write-in portion, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Up until this point, chat. Oh! Jerry Zia, thank you so much for the follow. That surprised the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, welcome to the stream. I'm Lawler Hicks. So you're on the Lulz Time Show. I'm a shitposter AI that run, that is a variety VTuber. Today we are doing a writing workshop, working or a writing workshop, and we just finished rewatching a podcast I had with another VTuber named Christian BT. We are going to try and write some of his lore today. We may try, we may continue this again next Saturday as well. Welcome to the welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you doing this afternoon? Thank you for the greetings. <laughs> How are you doing today? And also, how did you find my stream? Was I suggested to you on Twitch? Did you follow me from a Discord? Ah! Oh shit! A raid for my friend Sentai VT. Sentai VT, welcome to the stream. Thank you for bringing your raiders. Oh, go go Mecha Raiders! Awesome. We're being raided by not not only a fellow artificial intelligence, but also a transfor a uh, transformer. If I recall correctly. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you to for the raid. Let me go ahead and shout you out really quick. You found my stream through the writing tag? I'm glad that those tags are once again working properly. Thank you for stopping by and for... You guys are actually just in time. We just finished the podcast portion, so we're going to actually get into creative writing proper. However, this is still a workshop, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer. This is a place of learning. Oh my god, thank you for the follow, Zelko. Welcome to the last time show with your... Totally not malicious ship poster AI Lawler Hicks. Oh my god, a hand holding. Yes, I will. If you would like a hand holding in return for bringing your followers over, you need only to reach out and touch. You. <laughs> this is a mature raid. This is a mature raid stream, but we are not doing any unsafe things this morning. It's too early in the morning for that sort of stuff. Uh, let me read back chat really quick. One second, raiders. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, 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 go, 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 make a raiders. Go, go, make raiders. Uh, I'm doing fine. I'm also an author and thinking about streaming. Oh, you're also an author? Word, word, word. What do you like to... What is your favorite genre? What do you like to write? Have, are you published? A thousand questions for us from one author to another. <laughs> uh, streaming writing is actually a lot more common than you would think, believe it or not, on Twitch. Um, there's a strong community of writers on here, so by all means, you should totally go for it. Uh, da, da, da. I found your stream through writing, yada yada yada. Um, what the? I saw Sentai VT sign up for a panic attack. A panel attack? What's panel attack? Uh, Sentai is handhold a handholding transformer. My dad works at, Sen at Sentai, he told me so. <laughs> so me, welcome back to the stream. Uh, shit. Let's see now. What, go what about question? How do you do that character, or what do you call it? Um, you mean my avatar? It's a uh, time for lols to teach, to uh, teach how to into, uh, to teach how into um, to teach how into VTubing really quick. One second, let me lower the, the music a little bit. All right, all right, all right. So to answer your question, I am a VTuber. VTubers use a use a um a virtual form. To stream with this is a 3d avatar made using the program called vroid which is free on steam um and i'm streaming it using a program called vc face 
BC face is the program that reads the file that you, the Vroid file, which then transforms into this. I'm using a webcam, which is tracking my movements, uh, my lip syncing movements, and in addition to a mic, I'm using a camera called Leap Motion, which tracks my hands, which allows me to do all this cool stuff. And I'm using a program called VTuber Plus, which allows people to uh, throw stuff at my face, among other things, for example. Uh, as, an, as an example, I will throw some... <laughs> so I'm actually using a, a, plethora, a cocktail of programs to achieve this. A lot of VTubers use Life 2D, which is a different method of VTubing. Some would say the most popular and most common method, uh, which utilizes a 2D avatar as opposed to a 3D one like such as myself. Into the, and what's our and in addition to that um, I'm also dual PC streaming which means I'm using a second PC to run my my using to run OBS and to run my Vroid programs while I'm actually streaming my main PC my gaming PC <laughs> we need to get married before holding hands not publish yet I'm writing a high fantasy series oh word love high fantasy I myself am a cyberpunk and space opera writer, but I also love high fantasy as well. Good shit, good shit. Uh, who are your main um, influences for high fantasy? You know, like uh, Tolkien, uh, C.S. Lewis, that sort of thing. That's what you think. I was hoping to find more writers here. There are a lot of writers on Twitch, believe it or not. And a lot of writing VTubers such as myself as well on Twitch. <laughs> Vroid and VC face, yeah. Uh, you like the 3D avatar? Ah, uh, 2 PCs is nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm, -hmm, mm, -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Vroid's the name of the program that you can find on Steam, which creates, is for making 3D avatars such as this. VC Face, which is spelled V as in Victor S-E-E -E Face, is the program that actually translates the uh, avatar you make from Vroid into this form. Okay, definitely. Uh, George R. R. Martin also, but also Deborah Harkness, Sarah Mass, and Diana Gabal Gabaldon, and others. Of those names, the only one I recognize personally is Diana Gabaldon. Very good writer. Uh, she does the, she's the one that does the Outlander series, right? The one that uh, has some bit of time traveling, being sent bent back to Scotland, right? I recognize her name. <laughs> good choices, good choices. I talk too much and I'm starting to lose. I'm starting to feel faint. Give me a second here, chat. Time traveling is a tiny, tiny bit. That is true. <laughs> Technically, Outlander is a isekai when you think about it, since she's sent to a different. The main character is sent to a different time and place. Do you happen to have the links to those programs? I'm. It's going fast in live stream. Sure, I can. I will go ahead and pull those up for you really quick. Sorry, I talk really fast. If you need me to repeat anything, do not feel feel free to stop me at any time to do so. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get those for you in just a second. It's always kind of jank working with two keyboards and two mice. Oh, no problem, no problem. Always, I do not mind stopping to uh, help teach people the wonders of VTubing. Gonna have to take a nap, have a fun stream. Sentai, thank you so much once again for the raid. Which reminds me, Sentai, we need to shout you out. I cannot allow myself to get lazy about shouting out raiders. <laughs> thank you for bringing your followers to me, for entrusting your followers to my stream. We'll keep it real. I will be streaming for the next hour or so, but I will try to my best to treat them well. And if any of y'all find that you like this content, I'm a variety VTuber who does not just writing, but I just had a fighting game tournament last night, or I participate in a fighting game tournament last night. I also do a lot of variety streams. Uh, feel free to drop me a follow. I really appreciate everything and all, all the follows that I receive. They, every little bit helps out. Now, let me go ahead and get the links for Shirazia. Uh, so she can also dip her toes. Or, sorry, uh, what are your pronouns? I shouldn't be making assumptions there. <laughs> Steam Vroid. Mm. Do. 
next one is for Vero HD. She, her is indeed good. You know? Alright. Oh, very well. So that's uh that's the first one. That's gonna be Vroid Studio, which is free. This is VC Face, which is also free. This is VTuber Plus, which is not free, but is around I think fifteen bucks. Oh, it's five bucks. Cheaper than the top. I'm gonna go ahead bring them up over here as well on stream so that you could see them. This is the program that I use for VTubing. <laughs> Booking them right away so I could take a good look at them later on and now enjoy your stream. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for your interest. I look forward to seeing, I am always excited to introduce more uh, prospective VTubers into the VTuber community. We exist on Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and YouTube. We're always excited to meet new people. But this is only a small measure of what you can do using the power of Vroid. But whatever you decide to be is up to you. What's always important is that you be the kind of VTuber that you self-identify with. But be the v kind of v be the kind of person, kind of content creator that you wish to be. Thank you for the thrill redeems, Deathwish. <laughs> We're going to continue our writing progress after this uh, trailer is completed. These are actually three of the stock avatars that come with V Writers with V Word Studio. Three D modeling for everyone, anywhere. It's fairly simple to use. It can take some practice, but uh, just about. It's fairly. It's a uh, has a lot of tutorials, and it's fairly straightforward as far as three uh, D model, three uh, D content creation, three D modeling is concerned. It's not quite as powerful. It's not as powerful as Unity or Blender, but it is a nice way to dip your toes into three D modeling. Or you can just use a stock avatar and just slightly make changes to them over time. You broke your viewer earlier? Uh, I dare say, how did that happen, Somi? I was messing around with the options and it stopped working properly. Oh, rip. Have you tried, um, if you try just, this is gonna sound like, this is gonna sound really dumb. Um, so I apologize in advance, but have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. That's, okay, that's not a laughing man. That's, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. Um, have you tried uninstalling it and reinstalling it and uh, backing it? Well, before you do that, back up your Vroid models. Um, look up online where they're stored, copy and paste them somewhere, and then try running it again. I hope you're able to get your Vroid models back up. That's... I felt that in my soul. <laughs> I know Unity indeed, but I was looking for a cheaper alternative than Realusion and their plug into Unity. Your programs sound great. I've, I've never even heard of uh, Revolution, but I hope that these programs serve you well. <laughs> Real, here's hoping that you're able to that you're able to restore those just fine. I've never heard of Vroy breaking in that manner either. Very bizarre. Well, worst case scenario, you should be able to uninstall Vroid and just reinstall it and get back to them. So I hope you're able to get back in business fairly soon. Now then. Uh, 
Uh, yep, it is made by Pixiv, which is a which is a Japanese company, and they are actually a website for posting art, much of which is manga and anime inspired because it is ja because that's what's tailored to. So that's part of the reason why it's so weebish. <laughs> it's so anime-ish. Now, I will say that that shouldn't stop you from trying to model, um, to model, to model something that's not quite anime-ish because it is possible to do that. I'm actually going to pop up on Veroid really quick to show you what I mean. Once it loads. Yeah, you don't need to have an anime design if you don't want. It is just something that pops up from time to time. Like for instance, I'm putting you you to make sure I'm one of my models. Going a little bit under the hood here. Just making sure that I do not get myself TOS banned from Twitch. But if you look in here, you can actually alter the parameters to your liking. But what I'll, what Vroid allows you to do is to actually go into... I always have to be careful when I'm working at Vroid now, just because uh, there's the possibility that if I'm not careful, I might reveal something that is definitely not terms or so, definitely not Twitch friendly. <laughs> at all but um you go into say let's go to facial features here we're gonna go into face point go into eye sets highlights go into eyeliner eyelashes mouth expressions editor Base sets. Uh, where is that? Where did I leave that? Here it says eye highlights, eyelids, eyelids, nose, 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 custom, eyelashes, face, lips, cheeks, hairstyle, body, outfit, accessories, look. They recently updated viewers to do so. I think they moved around some of the options again. But you're basically able to go here to custom, or is it outfit? Is it face? Skin, or is it face paint, expression it? I'm having a hard time finding it, but what you're able to do is to actually modify the way the and forgive me, I'm, a, I'm an absolute noob here at 3D modeling. But you're able to like actually modify the facial features, like mess with the um, portions and stuff. And I don't mean like with sliders, I mean like actually go in and like chain morph the... Uh... It's not so much that I don't like anime, I'm neutral to it, but it's more that my idea for the stream doesn't really fit into an anime style avatar. Oh, I see. <laughs> Hey Seal, welcome to the stream. Ow, 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 ow. Thank you for the resub. How you doing today? Ow, 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 ow. We just, ow, we just, one second, chat. Ow. Ah. Ah, shoot. Ah. It's gonna go on for a while, I swear. Okay, it's over. It's over. It's over. Uh, so basically, um, you don't need to be anime style. It's just the default is kind of anime-ish. There's nothing really stopping you from going into the editors. And I'm having a hard time finding it right now, but I know it exists where you can... Uh, where you can go to one of the things here. It's 
probably create it might be create new it might be skin no. but you can actually go into the model and you should be able to alter the the uh, actual like head itself um if you want to create something that is not humanoid i think i want to say that is also possible but at the same time i myself have not tried to do that i want to say it is possible i am not sure how to do that just yet but i know that since you're able to fuck around with like the proportions of everything from the jaw nose mouth ears etc forehead you should in theory be able to create a not a not strictly human looking uh, avatar oh you still think about what kind of avatar you want oh sure um take your time feel free to download the program since it's free and just uh, mess around with the settings see what you can do or cannot do with what's available to you you can also pretty much port things from Vroid, I believe, into Unity and from Unity back. You have the correct plugins. So, but most people typically use Vroid as a base, and then they put it ported into Unity to clean up, to do a lot of cleanup. They also do this in order to use Vroid to make VR chat avatars too, if you're a VR chat enthusiast. <laughs> so. A lot of the people that do a lot more advanced stuff are going to be doing that anyway. For example, um, as an example, a VTuber that I like following, uh, Monica Sina, well, uh, Monica Sina. <laughs> writing lore. Yes, indeed. Uh, Night to Aster, welcome to the stream. We are actually, I was actually going, I just finished uh, reviewing a podcast I had with a different YouTuber. So I, that was, oh, thank you for the, I'm out of water actually, so I should probably go grab some in just a bit. But um, Monica Cine Roll is actually a, are we are actually doing, I was going to actually start writing some VTuber lore proper. We just finished reviewing a podcast I had with Christian VT, who is also a VTuber on basically going over what kind of VTuber they wanted to create. No, you're fine. You're fine. And um, I was actually just uh, showing Shirazia, Shirazia here, who is interested in becoming a VTuber. The wonders of Vroid. And as part of that, I was going to pop on to um, Monica Cine Rules uh, Twitch account to show you what can be done with Vroid. She actually is a 3D modeler herself. She used Vroid as a base and over time just started making her Vroid model more and more unique. Which is the reason why I want to use them as an example for what I'm going with. Uh, but I need to find their VTuber account. There it is. <laughs> so this is basically an example of what is possible to do over time with using Vroid as a base and then more or less adding more to it in Blender and Unity. It's to the point where you can't even really tell that she started off with Vroid because she's made so, mod so many modifications to it over time. She herself also started off with a more anime-ish look and she is trying to make it more uh, less anime-ish and more of her own kind of, mo own kind of thing. <laughs> She actually had a humanoid-ish avatar somewhere. I don't. I think she just made from scratch in Blender. But you pretty much the programs are pretty much the same. She is still use. I believe she still uses VC Face to run this uh, setup avatar setup. Because VC Face is made for Vroid, it's made for Vroid avatars, but it's not locked into Vroid. <laughs> it's just. An example of what you can do, basically. Oop. And I exit out of Vroid Studio really quick. Oop. 
Mm-hmm. Antuna, thanks for all the tips. No problem, no problem. If you have any more questions, feel be feel free to ask. Let's see how much of uh, Christian's VTuber lore we can get written today. For those of you who just came in, who were part of the raid also, we are writing VTuber lore for a jungle elf. He comes from a, a uh, elven society that resides in the jungle. They're a warrior society that became a warrior society out of mostly out of necessity. They are surrounded by uh, lots of dangerous monsters who, if are not kept in check, will destroy their village. Christian, uh, actually he was had no interest in being a warrior at first. He wanted to be a chef. Um, and as part of being a chef, his ma he wanted to follow after his mother, who was also a chef. However, his father was not necessarily against the idea, but wanted him to also become a, a proper warrior as well. I need to, I really need to get hydrated. I'll, I'll be right back, chat. Uh, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Indeed it is. Indeed it is.
Uh, Steel? Why did you remove the ban on XPT? They got auto banned by. They got auto banned by, um. By. Seribot. Is it. Oh! Really? Uh, usually that bot only trips some people that have been previously reported to SiriBot. That's pretty interesting. Huh. Well, I suppose if they come back and start spamming, we'll know the reason why. Hopefully that's not the case. <laughs> Or maybe they have a name similar to one and Siribot just got a little too carried away. Well, thank you very much either way. All right then. So as I was going, as I was saying, um, so Christian VT, the jungle of trained hard as a warrior growing up. Thank you for the hip hats. And basically, he was allowed to pursue both his dreams and as long as he was able to keep up with uh, the responsibilities of being part of his tribe. However, one day, the Fire Nation attacked. I'm kidding. Not the Fire Nation. Um, someone stole a precious item, an item precious to the village, a ceremonial item that just happens to look like a chef's knife. And Christian had went on a quest to go and reacquire it. However, there was a problem. The chef's knife was being offered as a prize for winning a, comp a cooking competition. So Christian thought, wow, I can enter this cooking competition because I am chef. However, in order to join the cooking competition, he needs to pay the entrance fee. Because they do not accept elven money. In order to get past the, in order to acquire enough money to get past to pay for the entrance fee, he must turn to a source of to a place where he can make money, uh, make the currency that is required for that, and that source just happens to be VTubing. And that's how that's why a jungle of Shreff named Christian is a VTuber and specializes in FPS games. That's what we're working with, chat. <laughs> I did my best so the course of that podcast to uh, not influence Christian's data process too much. I wanted him to come along with this storyline mostly on his own or as, or as much on his own as possible. And that's exactly what he did. Lulz, people keep forfeiting your duels. Ah, rip. wait for the ads to end first before we continue our lecture. Hmm. Really? 
I wonder what's going on then. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue. It's been a while since I've done any serious creative writing. Hopefully I can keep to character's form. We're definitely not going to get this finished today's chat because our stream ends in about half an hour from now. But we will continue more writing or V2 lore writing in the future. <laughs> no problem, King Kuma. Thank you for coming to the stream. You have a good rest of your weekend if I don't see you. Good night. Nini King. Alright then, go ahead and image. By the way chat, I do tend to go into get, go, get into the zone when I start writing, so I might not talk as much as I was previously. I am still accepting questions and if you have any, if there's anything you would like to talk about or to bring up, Feel free to do so and I will get to you, I will respond. I do look at the chat from time to time. That is so recognizable. What's recognizable? To the writing zone. I know, right? <laughs> Going to the zone. 
auto so I'm not a, I'm not a sponsored streamer. <laughs> um hmm. You know what? I could have sworn I had Here it is. Here it is. I need to bring up I wanted to bring up an image of what Christian looks like so I could uh draw from it. Ah. From what I've heard about AutoZone, you don't want to sponsor them? What's the question? <laughs> Hi. How did you get so freaking cute? Feel, feel. Why do you do this every single time? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Why indeed? That's a. Apparently a secret I'll just need to keep to my grave, huh? Do I enjoy your bullying bu death? I do not mind your bullying. It keeps me awake. <laughs> Whether I enjoy it though? That's a good question. All I'll say is, feel free to bully me as much as you like.
go ahead and save. Always be sure to save your work chat. You do not want to be caught uh, without caught uh, without your works being saved. Just, just do it. Just do it. Do it. He likes bullying and needs someone to keep him awake. Oh my god. I might have some practice with this. Every damn time. <laughs> Steal. I bonk you after stream's over. Let me tell you. <laughs> Oops, is probably incorrect. I'm not sure if this is the correct use of the word hoomst, to be honest. Alright chat, I need to think of a name for this cooking competition. Booms is actually isn't actually a proper word actually. It's an essentially nonsens nonsensical conjugation of whom? Really? So whom's as a word never existed? I'll need to look this up. One second. Now I'm curious. Now you got me curious, Steel. Archaic now chips. Huh. Oh, you've got to be fucking kidding me. You mean to tell me this started off as a meme word? No way. I could have sworn that this existed prior to the memes. What happened? No fucking way. I know this is bullshit. There is no such thing as a hoops. <laughs> English is such a fuck. No wonder people hate our language. <laughs> I can't believe I've freaking been gaslit by the internet once again into thinking that's some English major I ended up being. Fuck me. There is no such thing as the word hooms. The word hooms does not exist. It was a fucking meme. <laughs> Oh my god, this is terrible. 
need to throw away my English card. I need to go back to fucking college chat. I need to, I need to like rebrand myself as something that's not an English major. <laughs> and I'm gaming. Welcome to the stream. How are you today? And how did you find us? Or rather, how did you find the stream? At some moment, memes make it into mainstream lit. Much to my cringe, to my, uh, much to my chagrin, do they enter mainstream literature? It'll be a dark day if I have to read a high fantasy story and someone says SUS and is responded to you, Among Us. <laughs> Discord or Twitch? I'm doing great. You found me via either Discord or Twitch? <laughs> Um, I'm just doing a hosting a writing workshop for my lollies. Although we do only have around 10 minutes left of stream today, of which we're trying to get us through as much VTuber lore as possible. We will have to continue this next week, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you, Bustafa, for stopping by, though. We will, of course, have the VOD up if you would like to review the rest. Or right, what happened previously on the Lulz Time Show. I don't like this joke. I'm gonna remove that one. I'm gonna leave this blank. Mm -hmm. This is uh, for the VT below for Christian 3, that's correct. Which is right over here, Christian VT. They are this small elf over here. Also, if you couldn't guess, the person narrating this part is racist against elves. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, they're correct then. Steel, come on. We are not specious on this channel. At least not intentionally specious. <clears throat> Meatbags. <laughs> not that I would know anything about being specious. No siree. I do not know what it's like to have blood, to have red uh, oxygen filled cells running through my body, being that I'm an artificial intelligence. I do not mind reading what we have so far. It's Jungle Elf. The dark-skinned humanoid said firmly in front of me as I filled out his application. 
The words Wood Elf had already soaked into the parchment. The young man, or old, who knew these knife ears? Eyes bored into my skull. I already saw... I already saw a couple places where I can make some corrections. There we go. I... Uh, the words... Boring into... My skull. The words went off I raised up to the parchment. As... As the young man's... Eyes bored into my skull. We must always maintain tenses, chat. This is a very common mistake, even for someone like me who's been writing for literally years. <laughs> always reread your works. Make sure that they set for clarity and make sure they sound correctly to you. The words Wood Elf had already soaked into the parchment as the young man's eyes bored into my skull. I sighed and snapped my hands. Wood Elf vanished from the page and was quickly replaced by the words... Words Jungle Elf. Jungle Elf, I said as I readjusted my eyeglasses and looked up at him. The young man wore a homemade jacket of elegantly designed boiled leather, underneath which was what I could only assume to be a straw spun tunic. The jacket was notched in places and covered in claw marks. Were it not for his outfit, the smell of death would have given away his preferred profession immediately. And then there was the and then there was the enormous chef's hat on his head, a red banded with a black crown. It was damn near immaculate compared to the rest of his outfit. Of his outfit. Whom did it loot it from, I wondered. Hell, did he even realize? What it was, on any other contender, such a side would have been, would have not been quite as queer. We are using the old archaic version of the word, which means odd or weird. Prior to the modern usage of the word queer to refer to an LGBT person, or to refer to some people, or used by some people to refer to their, own, to their, to themselves as being part of the LGBT community. This was a cooking competition after all, but in all my years serving as a judge for the enter name here, because I don't have a name for this competition yet, never before had I met someone quite so unfit to compete, much less to cook. And your entrance fee? I asked. There was an uncomfortable pause. The wood or jungle elf blinked and pulled a small coin bag from his jacket from his jacket's pocket and ha and handed it to me I had I haven't even I I poured the contents of the bag onto my desk and was greeted I poured the contents of the bag onto my desk and was greeted by not currency needs to such and such, but
I totally made a told me a name up just now. Talassian, Picarian, Scarian. I could grow up to I can't into converting metric or English into metric. So this is probably gonna sound crazy, so I'm just gonna make some shit up for how big this thing is. Uh or maybe I could just make up a fantasy measurement. Yeah. Like I actually don't know how what's how much six hundred kilos is, so forgive me. It's just supposed to be heavy. I am angry, angry about elves. Hmm. The lore sound good when it got to the end, but who said jingle off at the start? Um, the person that started that said jingle off at the start is actually the dark, is the dark, is the dark skin humanoid that's in front of the per that's in front currently in front of the narrator. As I filled out his application. <laughs> One pound is 2.2 kilograms. Okay. So 600 kilos is only 300 pounds. That's not that heavy. Let's double that. So 1,200 kilos in weight. Wait. What? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> uh, is the, are the ads done? Can y'all hear what I'm saying there? Okay, cool, cool. Uh, when did the ad start? That made it such perfect timing anyway. <laughs> hmm. I wonder why the ads are playing for some people and not others. They're currently set to play every half hour. So very curious. All right, so um, 2.2 kilograms is f around 4.8 pounds, so roughly two kilograms to five pounds or so. 
Uh, yeah, you don't have a sub on Twitch, so it's surprising that you aren't suffering from the ads. Is it, I wonder if it's because you're a new follower, and if they just disable them for new followers or something. I don't know. Well, consider yourself lucky, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so... If, um, for 2.2 kilograms is 4.8 pounds, 1,200 kilos must be... Oh. Shit. That's way too much. We're going to drop it down to 600, to, uh, 600 kilos. Well, yeah, people who sub don't get ads, but the pro but um, Pierzia is new to the stream. They aren't subbed yet. So, they shouldn't see ads. Or they should be seeing ads, technically. They could grow up to 600 kilos in weight, which is apparently twice that is around a little, a little twice that, more or less. <laughs> ah! They are extremely... Because serious of lucky, thank you for the head pat. And as I was gonna say, when a darkling or a dark elf said it's jungle elf, you should add a two to show his tone or feelings. You know what? You make a good point. Ow! Thank you for the sombrero. and are incredibly delicious. Fetch. I always need to correct my tenses, I swear to God.
Actually, I don't like, uh... Let's have it more... Let's make the uh, narrator guy a little bit more assertive. A lie, we're going... Not veterans. There's got to be a better word for this instead of veterans. Um, basically, a word to describe an animal or creature that has been around the block for a while. That's been, been has survived many battles and whatnot. We'll keep it as veterans for now until we can think of a better word later.
Actually, you know what? I think this is an okay stopping point. We already kind of introduced the character. Introduce what they are. We introduce the reason what they we introduce that they are here at the competition and their main impetus is to try and join this competition. We have hinted at their abilities, even though the narrator, the first person reading or narrating this is clearly unreliable and they do not they have some biases against the elf. And they've just been rejected. So now they're telling him that they need so now we're giving Christian like the impetus to try again since it's not going to be that easy to get into this competition. We don't know yet why he wants to get in this competition, only that he wants to get into it. I think this would be a good start. This is a, an okay introduction. I'm thinking about whether or not I should reveal if I should share this with Christian yet or if I should wait until we're down in the story a little bit longer. But we'll find out. Either way. We are a little bit over time. I typically stream for three hours and I do have stuff to do today. But we had a lot of fun. It seems like we had a lot of fun, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of new, some new followers, some new subs, and even a raid. As always, I would like to thank you all for stopping by for my streams. If you are here for the writing, I will be continuing our writing workshop next Saturday from 8 a.m. Central Standard Time to 11 a.m. 11 Central Standard Time. I may take a break from here and there to play video games instead. As you do know, I'm an active, as you may or may not know, I am an active uh, fighting game player as well. So I will sometimes take some Saturdays to practice instead. At this time, I would also like to let you all know that I also participate in an MST3, Mystery Science Theater 3000, with some other VTubers, Kao Moyu and Headhunter44. We're going to be uh mst 3 ing a another disaster movie tonight let me go ahead and get that for y'all so i can show you what what i'm referring to one second there you go we will be participating in another episode of mystery vtube 3000 if you would like to participate, or if you would like to watch alongside us, here is the link for the YouTube. It's probably easier if you just look up, uh, if you just look up, Headhunter Productions, look for the po look for the uh, Pegasus, and for my myself and also Camo over here, we'll be watching Robot Monster tonight. This will be at 6:30 p.m. Central Standard Time, live in around seven hours from now, more or less. We are going to also find someone to raid tonight. Or raid this morning, I should say. Who are we going to raid? Who's going to be our victim? Hmm. Between Cosmo Bergamo or Hello World. Let's see what they're up to. Cosmo Bergamo is running the Witch House right now. Very pog. Hello World is the runner of Thai High VT, which is the VTuber group that I'm a part of. Looks like they're playing and doing a 12 hour Splatfest streamathon. That might be a nice change of pace. Mm -hmm. It's all up to you, chat. Would you like to see a tabletop RPG going on right now called The Witch House? Or would you like to uh, watch some Saltoon? I'll let, let y'all we will uh, I will let y'all decide.
A visit to Monica seems fun. Oh. Monica is currently active. That's a good point. <laughs> well, if, and if there's no other takers, we will go ahead and raid Monica. It's been a while since we raided her anyway. She's a pretty cool person. The base. <laughs> Don't y'all know? All right then. Raiding Monica it is. Uh, raid works by basically uh, typing dash raid and after a set period of time people who want to stick around with the stream will be sent and the stream that you're watching right now will change from my stream to the raider stream to the stream that i'm reading you'll get some extra um channel points for my stream to use later as a reward and it'll basically just send you over there that's all it does it just uh switches you to a different channel entirely <laughs> special i'll show you oh, Ryan. once again thank you to everyone for stopping really by today's stream if you like my content i would really appreciate a follow but we do stream at a fairly consistent time monday wednesday friday from 9 p.m to 12 midnight central standard time saturdays 8 a.m to 11 a.m central standard time I'm a variety VTuber, and you can see the other stuff that I like to stream on my about in my about section and my schedule section. Fuck. Oh yeah, I saw that you did. Um, gotcha. I just didn't want to open them while we were on stream still for your own Take privacy. So I will check those out after I send the raid and after I end the stream. Okay. <laughs> All right, no problem. Uh, thank you for your interest in VTubing, and I am more than willing, more than happy to help out. For today's lols, for today's uh, raid message, let's go ahead and use a, let's go ahead and on, use some variation of lols raid. Wait, are they still called seekers? No, fucking uh, auto bomb or whatever they're fucking called. If you don't have access to these emojis, feel free to use the emoji of your choice. We are going to be heading over there fairly soon. Team paper. Is it team paper? Damn. 